Hello, I hope you're good and I hope your week has been great. I know things has been interesting in Nigeria of late. I've, I've had a bit of downtime and during that period I was able to catch on a couple of movies and one of them that piqued my interest was Asteroid City by Wes Anderson. So um, this will not just be a breakdown, to be a conversation based on some of the things I could find on the BTS that, based on what I found interesting because it's almost like a masterclass when it comes to framing and compositing. I will start and we'll just walk through certain interesting things that I actually observed from most of the found footage from set. Giving the, observing the director, his processes and the cinematographer and all that was put together to make the entire film become like great. So without further ado, let's hit it. You're not here. We're not there. The car exploded. Come get the girls. I have to stay here with Woodrow. I'm not the chauffeur. I'm the grandfather. Where are you? Asteroid City, Farm Route 6, Mile 75. Now this is quite interesting because if you look, there's like that's the grip guy that's actually pulling the train miniature and they rig their own um, um, train arm, as I'll put it, to be able to like get that shot for the train. And you can also see it here when they do that with the shot of the missile, but when you watch it on the film, the scale looks so humongous and it actually becomes more appealing. There are more footage that actually shows us like the behinds of those um, set pieces where you get to see the scaffolding that you can see on the right corner of the frame that just passed and behind all these tall mountains, they're all fake which is quite interesting um, there's a lot that I said they built it on some flat land they found in Spain which they actually used to like simulate this whole desert and some, some of it was comped in based on uh, but most of it, like 99% of it was built so if you look at this drone footage now all these are all built to scale like it's almost like they made like a small community for the entire film. So if we push forward a bit, now this is the part that actually interests me. Most of the entire film was done on a dolly work. You could see how, if you go watch the film, you see what I mean by precise framing, cinematic movement. And most of it was shot like during the daytime, you get using mostly diffusion and daylight. Most of it was the precision of the framing that was done with um, the dolly and the gear head. Now this is interesting. If you look at this part in the film, all the stones actually had uh, were color corrected cyan. But looking at them from this perspective of the camera, you could see how sandy and air tones that they were. And it's, it's just very interesting with some of the things that are possible with the grade and how they could like pull out some colors and heighten the saturations and increase the density. It was quite, it was quite a very surreal experience going through um, uh, most of this you get. Now, if we look at this footage, you will get to see like um, the director, he's taking a scene and speaking of what I said earlier, you can see it's just a bounce board that is there taking a scene, giving like reflected light, the sun backlighting the character and that looks like a Zeiss Supreme lens and a 35mm on the, on the gear head. And that was quite, if you look at it again, that was like really interesting because that's all there is to the scene. There's no like, there's no giant overhead, there's no diffusion or anything, like as minimal as it gets, just shooting at the right time of the day because if you look at the long shadows on the floor it tells you the quality of light this is not like high noon or so so the sun is still like rising and that's how they actually could get this shot and i think this is quite um quite inspiring though it goes away from the tradition and the norms but still deliver amazing like the entire medium is just so pleasing now they are doing most of the locked off like you can see when they're doing some of the locked off that they have now um, I, I think this is now on like on, on a corner head, but most of those dynamic framing that needed precision, all of it was done on the gear head. The most interesting thing about this frame is the fact that it was done on lane tracks on tracks. So you have like three dollies on that's actually going on three tracks to be able to support the length, probably a 12 feet span, 12 to 15 feet span, and it's, it's looking more like a 12 feet though. And you have the director. So what this means that it can go both sideways left to right and can go front to back if you look at if you look at the contraption again you get so you can go both sideways left to right and can go front to back when you look at the entire setup and it played more in at the beginning of the not the beginning where they actually had like that campsite and this um, man here was actually giving a speech on on um on the asteroids like some kind of celebration the yes while he was giving this speech 
Now, this is interesting because these are like some of the few moments in the film that green screen was used. And if you watch, the green screen is actually being lit by the ambience and not by direct sunlight because it's also being backlight by the sun. So the ambience is coming from the opposite side of the screen that's not lighting the characters. Because the sun is coming like from the top right of the frame, if you look at the shadows on the floor, and I believe there's like some kind of large bounce that's in front or probably the sun that's white that's creating like this skip bounce feeling into the shadows. And I'm guessing the reason for the green screen is because some of the large prop elements that they can move, they can use that as a plate to create like set extension and, and achieve the symmetry or the frame lines that was designed for um, this frame or the scene that's within the film. Here yeah, is where he's like using the gear heads again, like you can see the Ari gear head for um, um, this kind of precision filming on a very giant film camera. So if we go beyond this frame, just like one of the perspective where they had like this whole dancing moment, if you look at the shadows on the ground, same thing. Like it's almost like it's a masterclass in learning how to shoot with natural light. At the, quali the, the time of day that the quality of light is right to be able to get like the entire framing that you require. And you can see the cinematographer working the gear head just to get that fine frame of the, those are like the long boom poles which the sound guys are using like to get the sound. When the um, dolly comes in, they can raise it up. But on the wide shot, they go way lower to be able to get it with, their, with all their boom cats. And that's like a director on his um, monitor watching and being able to like see and give notes and performance to what's going on. If you actually look for like a masterclass on um, composition, framing, and cinematography, I believe this film is some it's is what giving a look you get. That's where you get to like enjoy all the goodness of the framing. This is just um, seeing a wonderful piece of amazing cinematography that is built not just on artificial lights, but if you're working with the sunlight, if you're working with nature, what you have given, what's possible that you can create. And it was really interesting to see what could be made. So if you haven't seen the film, take time out and go see Asteroid City. Let me know in the comments what you think about it. If this has been useful to you, like, subscribe, and join the conversation on what you think was a cool technique that you could take and actually implement in your work. And until next time when I see you, when we break down another film or talk about something different that's contributed to your process, improvise, adapt, and overcome. Thank you.